this video I'll demonstrate how to use the Dynamic Shield to control a Phantom Hexapod Robot Kit. The Phantom is a Hexapod kit that is available from Trojan Robotics. I've provided a link for it in the description of this video. This one uses the AX18 smart servos. They're a little faster and more powerful than the AX12s. I've also added a gripper hand to the front of it. This hand is also available from Trojan. However, I replaced the regular RIS servo with the Dynamixel servo and also added a pressure sensor under the finger pad to detect when the hand is closing on something. The Phantom comes with the Arbotics controller. The Arbotics is a great little Arduino board that allows you to control Dynamixel servos and has a built-in XP module port. However, in my projects I really needed to use the new, more powerful ARM processors. I also needed more I.O. lines than is available on the Arbotics. Another issue I had with the Arbotics is that it forces the XP to use the only hardware serial line. I'd really prefer to use that for something else and then use the software serial line for the XP instead. The Dynamic Shield solves these problems. It allows you to directly control large numbers of Dynamic Soul servos and it has Grove connectors that allow you to easily attach Grove or Robot Geek sensors and actuators. A new Arbotics Pro board was just released that's more powerful and it has more serial lines than the original Arbotics. However, it does not have the Grove connections like the Dynamic Shield. The Dynamic Shield is made to work with the Arduino Do. I also have a version for the Arduino Mega, and I'm working on one for the Zero. The Do is one of the newer Arduino boards that uses the new SAM 32-bit ARM microcontrollers. It's much more powerful than the original Arduinos. In addition, the Do has the same footprint as the Mega, so it has a ton of I.O. channels for you to use. One problem with the Do and Zero boards, though, is that they are 3.3 volt systems and are not 5 volt tolerant. This means that a lot of sensors and actuators that work with the older Uno and Mega will not work with the Do out of the box. You'll need to level shift those voltages to be able to work with them. Luckily, the Dynamic Shield solves that problem by level shifting a lot of the I.O. lines for you, including all of the pulse width modulation lines. This makes it possible to use those other sensors and actuators. The Dynamic Shield also has circuitry for reading and writing to Dynamic Cell Smart servos. This allows you to directly control them. In addition, it has numerous Grove connectors there are two separate serial lines, two separate I2C lines, six pulse width modulation lines, and four analog grove connectors. This makes it very easy to hook up off-the-shelf grove sensors. For this project, I'll be using the Grove XP socket. Unlike the Arbotics, the Do has four serial lines. Line 1 is being used to communicate with the Dynamixel servos, but the other lines are free. We'll be using serial line 3 to hook up the XP for this project. However, you could just as easily connect it to one of the digital Grove connectors and use the software serial port for communication. I wanted to be able to pull the Arduino off and on my robot easily, so I added some magnets to the top plate and made some magnet standoffs for the Arduino. This lets me just pop it on and have the magnets keep it there until I want to remove it. First, I'll place the Arduino on the robot and then connect it to the XP socket to the RXD3 serial line. I've used a Dynamixel hub inside the robot to distribute the Dynamixel connections. Let's go ahead and connect that up to the shield. Then we need to connect the hand. The wrist uses a Dynamixel servo that's connected to the hub, so it's already taken care of, but the hand itself uses a regular micro servo to open and close. Let's connect it up to the D2 column of the 3-pin header. Make sure that you place the black wire at the top that's labeled ground. Next, make sure that jumper J14 is set to use VDD. We'll be using the 5 volt supply from the Arduino to power our micro servo. If you leave this set to EXT, then you may damage the micro servo with the hand because the dynamic cell will be using 12 volts, and the micro servo can't handle that much voltage. Next, let's connect the pressure sensor. Plug it into the AD11 column on the 3 pin analog header row. Again, make sure that you put the black wire up top that's labeled near ground. Finally, let's plug in the power cable to the shield. You should make sure that jumper J6 is on so that the battery will power both the shield and the Arduino. If 
Finally, let's connect the USB cable from the computer into the programming port of the Arduino so that we can download our sketch. And that's it for our hardware. Pretty simple, right? Now let's take a look at the sketch that will control it. The Phantom uses an inverse kinematics control library called NU. This stands for Nearly Universal Kinematics Engine. This is basically an engine that lets you specify a set of poses for your robot, and it will calculate what movements it needs to make to get from its current pose to the target pose. You can use a tool called PyPose to create the pose information that Nuke uses, and then have it generate out a customized Nuke library for your particular robot. For the Phantom, I've manually modified the Nuke code that was provided with the robot, so it will also work with the Dynamic Shield and the Arduino Do. As part of my Kickstarter for the Do, I have a stretch goal of modifying the PyPose application so it can generate Nuke libraries for use with either Robotics or Dynamic Shield. It would then be possible to easily use the Dynamic Shield to control any of the robots that currently use the Robotics and PyPose. If you find that possibility as exciting as I do, then please support the Dynamic Shield Kickstarter so I can make it a reality. For the moment though, I'm using my hand edited version. First thing that you need to do is copy the required libraries into the Libraries folder for your Arduino. You can find these by going into the Dynamic Shield repo, then the Libraries folder. You'll need the Byload Dynamic Shield Serial, the Dynamic Shield Serial, and the Commander Hardware Serial or HS. You want to copy those. Then on Windows, you go to the Documents, Arduino, Libraries folder, and you want to copy them in here. As you can see, I've already added these into my system. Now let's load the sketch that controls the hexapod. Go back to the Dynamixel Shield repo, then go into Sketches, and then load the Hexapod Mark II sketch. It first includes the servo, dynamic serial, and then the Byloid dynamic serial libraries. Then it includes the commander hardware serial and nuke libraries. It then turns on the AX18 options with the define. If your robot instead uses the AX12, then you want to comment this back in and uncomment out the line above it. It then has a define to include the gripper. If you don't have the gripper with your robot, then you want to comment this out, and that will take out all the code related to the gripper and wrist. Next, it defines a bunch of constants and stuff that are needed for the, to get the gripper working correctly. Then it defines a dynamic serial class with serial line 1. Then it defines a bioloid dynamic serial, passing in the dynamic serial class we just created. Then it instantiates the Commander Harbor serial line using serial line 3. In setup, it first calls configure servos. This starts out by creating a debug serial line. Then it starts up the dynamic serial class. Starts up the Commander. And then zeroes out the wrist and hand grippers for the uh, gripper hand. Then wait just a little bit and checks the voltage for one of the servos and make sure it's greater than 10 volts. If it's not, then it sits and waits until that happens. This is to ensure that we don't try and run the robot if the voltage is too low on the servos. Then it reads the current position of all the leg joints and slowly moves the legs to reach the default standing state. In the loop method, it checks to see if any commander joystick commands have been received. If they have, then it parses them and changes the gate type if one of the buttons was pressed. And it sets the X and Y speeds when the joysticks are moved. It then calls the methods to process the gripper wrist and hand, 
These methods monitor the front buttons to move the wrist up and down and to open and close the arm. If the pressure sensor feedback goes above a certain value, then it will stop the hand from closing any further. Finally, after the gripper is processed, the loop method calls the Bioloid class to calculate the inverse kinematics and interpolate from its current leg positions to the next gate position. Let's go ahead and upload this sketch and watch the robot in action. For this first test, I'm actually going to use a 12 volt power supply instead of the battery directly. Let's plug that in. Then let's upload our sketch. And you can see that our robot legs have gone up into their standing state. So it looks like we're good to actually try and test this robot out. Let's go ahead and do that next. The spider robot is also quite fun for chasing little kids around the house as well. If the Dynamic Shield is something you might like to own, then please support my Kickstarter campaign so I can get them produced commercially and make them available. Also, if you'd like to use PyPose to automatically generate nuke libraries that can be used with Dynamic Shield, then please let your friends know so that the stretch goal can be reached. Thanks for watching.